Hello, welcome to Paratex Bipod webinar. My name is Michael Weiss. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Western Canada. Uh, you heard my voice on the Monopod webinar if you were able to watch that one. Uh, this is one uh, in a series of webinars that we're doing on our products and how you can use them to affect a rescue. Upcoming webinars, you can see the dates there. Obviously today on the 1st of September is the bipod and you can see the other webinars spaced out every two weeks uh, and you can uh, see which ones that you'd like to attend. Go through some warnings here. This PowerPoint presentation like our other webinars are for informational purposes only. It is very important in technical rescue uh, is to get hands on training by a qualified instructor and then also get regular hands on training to become proficient. Uh, think safe, act safe and be safe as bipods and technical rescue equipment are inherently dangerous. The focus of this webinar, there are many uses for artificial high directionals and our Paratech bipod is very, very versatile. Uh, it can be used with both heavy and rope rigging. Uh, the focus of this webinar will be with the heavy rigging elements uh, snatch blocks, shackles, grip hoist, chain hoist to deal with heavy rescue loads. Uh, due to the versatility of the bipod, there's many potential ways to safely rig it. We're going to demonstrate setup and three ways to rig the bipod that would allow you to have both vertical and horizontal movement of the load. So we'll just go over the kit. In the bipod kit will be a heavy duty carrying bag, two bipod base plates and the bipod head. Everything is made out of either a high grade aluminum alloy or stainless steel. The, uh, the hinge rotating anchor plate will, can rotate right around the head. The base plates hinge and swivel, which allows very smooth operation uh, when you're using the bipod as a gantry. The head also has side anchor rings, our standard rings that are rated for 5,000 pounds at a four to one. And the head also has indicator lines to indicate max leg spread uh, eases setup. The bipod base plates, as you can see, have eight picket holes like our standard base plates and a carrying handle. And you get a close up there of the uh, female socket that allows it both to swivel and pivot. Here's a, another shot of our bipod head. Okay. What it allows you to do is to quickly set up the leg spread angle you'd like. When you the female sockets are pushed right together and stop, the leg spread angle is 45. When you line up those two red indicator lines near the person's hands in the picture with uh, the line just outside the pins in the head, when those are lined up, the leg spread is 60 degrees. It makes it very easy to set it up and also it allows you to pick which angle you'd like to have uh, for your leg spread. Uh, there's other bipods out there that are you're locked into place at either a 45 or a 60 and you don't have any opportunity to adjust that. Again, that rigging plate in the middle where you're going to be making your attachments made out of stainless steel and pivots right around the head and allow smooth operation and versatile rigging. On the side of the bipod head is a load chart and gives you at different spread angles of the legs. Uh, it gives you the different loads in both kilograms and pounds. The max working load is 4,618 pounds at a four to one safety factor. So you don't have to memorize that. It'll be right on the sticker chart there. So there is confusion sometimes between bipod and gantry. Some people use them interchangeably. Um, a bipod as we use in a rescue is just a two legged artificial high directional. The previous webinar was the monopod. That was a one legged artificial high directional. A gantry as we use it for rescue is a bipod that we've rigged so that we can move it through an arc. And then as this moves to the arc and the load is attached to it, the load moves through that arc both vertically and horizontally. So a bipod can be used as a gantry, but a bipod's not automatically a gantry. It depends on how you use it and how you rig it. So basically, if you're going to use that frame, that bipod to impart horizontal movement, then it's a gantry. Gantry equals horizontal movement. 
So some general physics. At maximum horizontal lean, 45 degrees from the ground. You can see that on the picture. This is from the, the FEMA structural collapse uh, student handbook. OK, a, basically your rule of thumb, if you have a thousand pound load on that A frame leaned over at 45 degrees, you're going to have about two thirds of the weight trying to kick the feet back towards the anchor and you're going to have about two thirds of the weight of the load trying to spread those legs apart. So all of these forces as you if you use it as a gantry and you bring it closer to the vertical, all these forces will de decrease. Except the one that's trying to spread the legs apart, so it's important to secure the bipod feet with straps, pickets, uh, and whatever anchors you have to resist the spreading and kickback forces. As well, at 45 degrees, if you're trying to move that load or hold that load in place, about 1.25 times the weight of the load is actually going to be on that grip hoist or rope or whatever you're using to hold that A-frame or the, the bipod in, in place. So some general rules. Uh, don't place the bipod where it's going to be placed under vertical load at an angle less than 45 degrees. You really start to multiply your forces as that bipod breaks at 45 degrees, basically your breakover point. Uh, the closer the ankle anchors for the horizontal rigging are to the bipod, the more forces force is placed on the rigging and those anchors. A uh, rule of thumb, if you can do it, is if you can put the anchors Two to uh, two point five to three times the height of the bipod away from the midpoint. Now you might not be able to do that based on where you can place your anchors, or you might have a limit as to how much. If you're using a grip hoist, uh, what the length of the wire rope that you have, the cable that you're using with the grip hoist, uh, you might be um, stuck and you can't do it that distance. But if possible, if you can put that farther away, the farther away those anchors are. The less forces on the anchors and the and the equipment that's holding that bipod uh, in a from horizontal movement. OK, if you're using it as a gantry, you need to have uh, it rigged to control the horizontal movement from both sides. If you're not using it as a gantry, you're just using it as a high point to lift something up. You only need one system and anchor to hold the bipod in place. So we'll talk about a lot of people get confused. They put the bipod together and they're not sure at, I want to have it at this angle and this height, but I don't know where to put the bipod foot plates. Uh, Nigel will be going through on the video uh, a very simple and good system to set up, but uh, we're going to show you a chart here. So just to, to look at if you look at the left hand side on the front view, uh, there's the the leg spread is the angle between the legs as you're looking at it head on. The reach would be from the top of that plate that you're rigging to down to the ground at the midpoint between the two foot plates and then the leg length is the length of the strut and extension if you're using one of the leg length. Now the second slide to the right is the side view if you're looking at the bipod and it's showing at 60 degrees and 45 degrees attached to a load and it's the distance from the midpoint of the bipod feet the point right between the feet to the center gravity of the load is the distance that you're going to set those feet back. So that'll make a little bit more sense when we move to the chart. So these will be available, both the diagram before and this chart, both in US and metric. So if you look at the left, the top chart will be with a 45 degree leg spread. The bottom will be a 60 degree leg spread. And working from left to right, you can see the length of the legs, what the reach would be at that leg spread and length of legs. Then it showed the middle one shows you the distance from the center of gravity to the midpoint of the legs. If you're starting at 45 degrees from the ground, the distance back and then the last column on the right would be your distance from the center of gravity of load to the midpoint between the legs at a 60 degree start. The chart on the bottom is that the columns are all based on the same thing except at a 60 degree leg spread of your bipod. So next we're going to be moving into a video that's going to show up, show the, the setup of the bipod. And it, hopefully everything that I've said in the diagram and chart will make more sense when you actually see the video. Hello, I'm Nigel Leatherby, training manager with Paratech Incorporated. Today we're going to go over the bipod. 
we do a few lifts with the bipod incorporated in a couple of different uh, skills. Uh, but first I'm going to go over the equipment. What we're going to use for this today is we're going to use two 610 longshore struts, two 635 longshore extensions, a bipod kit that entails two bases, one bipod head. We're going to use a couple of grip hoist, pickets and sledge, some change of direction, and some straps. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to go over a couple of different ways how to lift the block. Going to go over some uh, different distances with the bipod measurements. It's always, it's always a concern if to place your feet and your bipod in the right position so your bipod's actually over the load to do a lift or to do a transfer through, a, through an arc. So basically what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pick my two anchor points. I'm going to lay a picket down that goes from one anchor point to the other. I'm going to bring another picket so it gives me a T that gives me a square to the load and to my anchor points. Then I'm going to come with my tape measure. I'm going to be building a 60 degree angled bipod today. So I'm going to come from the center of the load. I'm going to come out seven feet. Seven feet is going to give me the position where my base is going to go relative to the load. So when I pin my bases and angle my bipod over, my bipod is going to be 60 degrees, so my head is central to the load. If I wanted to do a 45 degrees, then I take my tape measure, I take it to the center of the load, and I come back nine and a half feet. Nine and a half feet would be here, and that will give me a 45 degree bipod, so the head is over the center of the load. Okay, first thing we're going to do is set up the bipod. We're going to place our bases approximately where they need to be. Then we can adjust the bases when the bipod's fully, fully assembled. Head will go. Now we bring our struts and extensions in. Put the strut with a threaded, set, threaded shaft down to the bottom. Make sure it's locked into place. Then we're going to put our extension in. On one side of the head. Do the same for the other side. Make sure it's locked in place. Now we can adjust our bipod so it's actually in line with the load. Position my base. Making sure my red lines are in line with the head. Then we need to pick at the base. Pickets need to be driven in two-thirds of the length, but for this demonstration purpose, just take them in about six inches. Okay, for my anchor, my anchor points and both my lifting points, I'm going to be using grip hoist today, or a 2 or 4. This is a TU-28. I've got TU, two TU-28s here today, 4,000 pound capacity. And I've got one TU32 that we're using today with, a, with an 8,000 pound capacity. 
the grip hoist. It's a great tool. I've anchored, anchored it back to my anchor point. I'm going to make sure it's in freewheel. On the side of the grip hoist, you've got this little pin. On the top, you've got the one handle. You're going to push the pin in, make sure the handle is vertical so it's in freewheel. Then, I'm going to take my cable and I feed my cable through. Making sure it doesn't get tangled. I'm going to hook the other end of the cable onto my bipod head. I'm going to go with the two outside holes. This grip hoist is going to anchor the bipod this way. And I got a grip hoist down there that will anchor the bipod from coming this way. Then once that's on, I'm going to set it up for my lifting device. For the first one, I'm going to be using a chain hoist with a handle. Always remember, be sure the equipment you're using is strong enough for the task at hand. The concrete block we've got, we've measured and, and we've actually took a calculation. That concrete block weighs around about 2,300 pounds. So we're going to lift that block off the person. Hello, Nigel Leatherby, training manager with Paratech Incorporated. Good morning. Thank you for watching the webinar for the bipod today. Uh, we can have answered a couple of questions that may be available. First question I've got is, is that a cheat sheet for figuring out the bipod setup distances for the feet? Yes, that is. If you saw the video with Michael uh, explaining about the bipod, then you see the cheat sheets on there. That cheat sheet is going to be available on the Paratech website under resources and under the bipod section. So that you'll be able to see, download or print. So now that you've gone through the video and have seen the uh, basic setup of it, we're going to go through three basic rigging types with heavy rigging for this webinar. The first will be a bipod with a direct vertical lift, meaning there's an element rigged directly in line with the head of the bipod in order to put vertical movement straight up and into the head. Lots of times it's good to get some vertical lift of your load before you start to move it horizontally because they're that way you're not dragging that load across the patient if there's a patient directly under that load. Uh, in this case, we'll be using a, uh, a uh, come along to impart the vertical movement. The second will be a bipod with a redirected vertical lift, meaning that we'll have a grip hoist outside the footprint of the bipod coming through a snatch block and down to the load to impart that vertical movement. Uh, the third video will be an English Reeve vertical lift. Um, that will be uh, double directed, redirected in that a grip hoist outside of the footprint will go through one snatch block down to a snatch block at the load and then back up. So the way of the bipod with the direct vertical lift, some of the advantage of it is that you don't need a separate anchor or separate equipment outside the load to impart the vertical lift. Sometimes teams only have one or maybe two grip hoists. Uh, but they do have a come along or a chain fall uh, that they can use to impart that vertical movement that they can rig in place. So it, it saves a little bit on gear. Some of the disadvantages is that you have someone imparting the vertical lift in the footprint of the bipod. You'll see on the video, uh, Nigel will give some pointers about how you can lessen the, the danger of being in the footprint as you're lifting. And so now we're going to go to that video uh, showing a direct vertical lift. Okay, we've raised our bipod up around about six feet. And the reason behind that is, it's just so it makes it easier to attach different things. And I can check that all my rigging, my anchor points are good to go. Now, I'm gonna attach my chain hoist.
I've attached my chain hoist to the center. I'm doing it so my handle is down. The reason behind that is, so when it's, the bipod is up at its, at its max height when I need it, I don't have to climb on the load to adjust and lift the load or take the tension of the load. So with that said, the bipod's gonna be put into place. We do one or two ways. If you've got enough manpower, you can just lift the bipod into place and tighten everything up. Because we're a bit short of manpower because of the COVID-19, we're gonna do this with just the, the grip hoist back and forth. We're gonna get it in place a little ways. Then we're gonna set up ready to go. Okay, with the bipod at nearly 90 degrees, we're gonna use the two grip hoists to lower the, the bipod so it's over the load. I'm gonna take the slack out and my partner in crime, he's gonna take that grip hoist in so we lower the bipod controlled over the load. Okay, stop. Okay, on this scenario, we've got the bipod set up to do a lift utilizing the chain hoist. We've got the, the bipod anchored both ways with grip hoist, so the bipod is solid, ready to go. I've got a tagline on the block. The chain hoist handle is down at the load, so it makes it easier for the rescuer, so he hasn't got to go climbing around. The rescuer is going to start lifting with the chain hoist to lift the block off. The only thing you've got to watch with this is you've got to watch your feet just in case something does happen. The rescuer was on this side of the bipod, so he's out of the mouse trap. If anything was were going to happen, the bipod is going to fall this way. So my bipod shadow there is virtually the mouse trap. As you see, the load is off the victim. Stop there. The load's off the victim. Now we can extricate the victim from under the load and get him on his way to hospital. Okay, in this scenario, we're going to lift the, the block with the, the chain hoist. Then we're gonna transition the block over off the patient utilizing the two grip hoists. Okay, stop. Now we can transition the block over off of the patient. Ready? Hold. We do this in synchronization so that way it doesn't tighten up either direction. But it's still, with the grip wise pretty taut, it still keeps it so the bipod doesn't react freely and want to go one way or the other way. Stop. Now with the block totally off the patient, we can extricate and get the patient on the way to hospital. So the next video that we're gonna go to is a bipod with a redirected vertical lift. As you can see on the picture of the right, you have another grip hoist, I would assume, or, or winch line that's coming in through a snatch block that's rigged into the midpoint of the rigging plate at the top of the, the head of the bipod down to the load. So some of the advantages of that is that the vertical lift operation is not done by someone that's close to the load. If you lean the bipod over as well, one of the advantages is that the resultant, an imaginary line between the load coming into and out of that snatch block, you can basically have that imaginary line pointing down directly into the feet of the bipod. It's not that case in this picture here, but you can do that. And that puts less force on the, the grip hoist holding that bipod in place. It basically puts it within the compressive footprint of that bipod.
So some of the disadvantage are requires a little bit more gear, uh, possibly requires a separate anchor, and your redirect may may need to be adjusted as the load is moved horizontally. So if you've if you've lifted it up off the patient and now you're going to move the gantry using as a gantry to move the load horizontally, you might need to then also adjust the uh, grip hoist that's lifted it up uh, to adjust your, your vertical height as it moves through the arc if, if you need to keep it in the same place or you need it to move it more than what the gantry is doing. So now we'll go to that video showing uh, bipod with a redirected vertical lift element. Okay, with, the, with this scenario set up, we're just doing a different lift for the concrete block. This one, the, tr the bipod is set up. We'd anchor that way with a grip hoist. We'd anchor that way with a grip hoist. We've got a third grip hoist going that way through a snatch block coming down to the load to lift, use the grip hoist to lift the load. I'm holding the tagline just in case it moves. The rescuer is lifting the block. We don't really want the block to move too much. We only need to lift as much as we need. Okay, stop. Block's there, we can come in now, extricate the, the victim from under the block and do what we need to do and put him in a, in a bus to go to the hospital. On this setup, we got the same setup with the bipod anchor that way with the grip hoist, anchor that way with the grip hoist. But just to give us a little bit more control with the load and to make the load a lot less strenuous, we've incorporated another snatch block to give ourselves a two to one coming up through the two pulleys or the two snatch blocks coming back down to the lifting device. I'll take care of the, ta the tagline while the rescuer does the lift. Just makes it a little bit easier on the rescuer to pick up this 2300 pound block with a 4000 pound grip hoist. Again we got the traveling snatch block on the load so it gives us a two to one advantage on this. So instead of him lifting 2,300 pounds, he's actually lifting about 1,000, 1,100 pounds. Okay, that's good. Read it up. Now we can extricate the, the victim from under the, the block and send him on his way to hospital. So now our third and last video will be the English Reeve lift. Some of the advantages of this is it, is it gives a two to one mechanical advantage in the vertical lift. That snatch block that's attached to the load is a moving pulley, basically, for those of you that are into rope rescue. And that, theoretically, there's some loss for friction and everything else, but theoretically, that gives you a two to one mechanical advantage. So if you, let's say you have a lighter grip hoist, and maybe not quite up to, with a single line, up to moving the object that you need to lift, by putting that two to one in it, you basically, theoretically have doubled the uh, lifting capacity of your grip hoist. And the reeve does not automatically need to be adjusted as the bipod is moved horizontally. Uh, some of the disadvantages, more equipment is needed, potentially more anchors. And because that cable that's doing the reeve is running through the head of the uh, bipod down to the load back up to the bipod head and then across to another anchor, uh, you might find you don't have a cable long enough uh, to do that with. So if, if you're going to have uh, do something where you're going to do an English Reeve lift on a regular basis, uh, you might want to definitely look at, if you don't already have it, maybe purchasing a longer cable for your grip hoist or using a winch line that has a large spool on it. So now we'll take a look at the uh, English, English Reeve lift video. Okay, in this scenario, the different lifting device we're using an English Reeve. If you take a look, we've got our anchor point going back that way. Then we get our lifting device coming through one snatch block, through the bottom snatch block on the load, back up through the other snatch block, then to an anchor point on that side, creating the English Reeve. You'd anchor on this side, you'll adjust the angle of your struts up to about 60 degrees. Once the angle of your struts uh, is at that 60 degrees, the rescuer can start lifting, utilizing the English Reeve. The snatch block on the left, my left, will hold the bipod from coming all the way over. 
why the two snatch blocks on the right and the load work, hence lifting the block. The block is up, stop, we can retrieve the victim and send him on his way to hospital. So because the bipod is so versatile and there's a limit on the time that we can have for a single webinar, uh, we can't cover all the potential uses of the bipod. So here in this case, we'll show you that it can be used in animal rescue. Uh, some photos here of a training event on the left to the middle and right. Uh, photos of an actual animal rescue uh, using it as a high directional or a high point to lift up the animal and also if you needed to use it as a gantry then you could not only lift the animal up then you could move them horizontally away from the pit or hole or whatever they're caught up in so it's one of the many uses for the bipod Another use in rope rescue is you can use it as a artificial high directional and A-frame to lift up your track, tag, and, and reeve lines if you're using it to clear edges. So you can see some pictures there. Uh, well, the middle one's a little bit of a close-up of some rigging, and you can see how it can be used uh, in, in, for uh, high line uh, rigging. You also can use it in rope rescue as an artificial high directional for edge clearance. Uh, you can also use it like a gantry or a luffing A-frame to not only lift the patient up, then you can also move them horizontally. So the picture on the left is was used in a uh, trench training uh, scenario where the gantry, after the trench was shored, the bipod was set up as a luffing A-frame or gantry. The, was, there was a uh, pre-rigged four to one, lifting the patient vertically out of the hole. And then you can see a, just the line on the very right. You can see a haul system connected to the rope. And the rope on the left has a descent control device on it. And the A-frame was then used to move the, uh, the dummy horizontally out of the hole and then lowered back down to the ground. The picture on the right, you can see that it's tied back just on one side. So there is a caution there to make sure that you don't lift that high directional, the bipod, so far that you go past the breakover point or the bipod could come back but that's beyond the scope of this webinar just showing you some of the uses uh, beyond what we've shown in the videos uh, of what the bipod can be used for so at this point i'd like to thank you again for attending the paratech webinars uh, we've been very happy with the attendance uh, due to covid and all the ramifications that have happened it's it's uh, our pleasure to produce some webinars to help give you some training material that you can use, uh, especially because many departments have had their training curtailed during this time. And we look forward to uh, producing and, and bringing out more webinars for you in the future. And again, Paratech thanks you for attending. Hello again. Uh, we had a question come in about uh, the struts, if the struts have to be fully in the collapsed position when used for the bipod? The answer to that is no, they don't have to be. You can use them with the maximum adjustment of the thread and the maximum capacity and the length of the struts. Uh, we, we use the 635 and the 610 because they give us the 12 feet we needed. We, wasn't, we want to lift them the, the load that high. But you can actually go with a 635, a 610, and a 610 adjusted out. As long as you don't exceed 16 feet on the strut, you'll be good to go. You can just use the strut adjusted all the way out if you needed to, to get the, achieve the 10 feet. Or you can use the variety of extensions that are used with the USAW kit. The 135, the 235, the 435, or the 635. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the webinar this morning. I uh, hope you uh, learn a little bit and at least taking something back. As you see, we did three different or four different ways now to lift the concrete block. English Reeve is a great way to do it. 
You only need to utilize two grip points. But as Michael says, you got to be careful when you're doing this, whereas you get long enough capable, cable to do this and making sure that the equipment you use is strong enough for the job. Again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next one. Uh, I think the next one is the elevator rescue. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I think the next one is, is the supporter, not the elevator rescue. The elevator rescue is in four weeks. Thank you.